You I claim. Really? Whoa, I can barely breathe in that thing. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Rockzilla and welcome to the squad. I was just browsing YouTube today. I came across Darth Maul behind the scenes. Let me tell you, I am one of the biggest Darth Maul fans there is. I'm glad I came across this video because I'm the type of guy, if I like a character, I want to know all the details, all the juicy details. I know a lot, but I'm quite sure it's some stuff that I'm missing. This is my reaction to behind the scenes of Darth Maul. This is pretty much the creation <coughs> of the best Sith, <coughs> the best Sith Lord, <coughs> the best Sith Lord. <laughs> I'm just playing, you know, I know everybody's a Darth Vader. I'm a Darth Vader fan too, but I just something about Darth Maul kind of triggers me. That's my that's my guy. If you guys could, could you leave your boy a like, comment, tell me who your favorite Sith Lord is, tell me about your favorite Darth Maul moment, and let's get to it. May the force be with you. Since the release of the Phantom Menace in 1999, <laughs> that's my boy there. Darth Maul has become an iconic figure thanks to his devilish appearance and acrobatic hey. lightsaber moves. Ray Park. But it all could have turned out very differently. Mm. My the boy. beginnings of the character date to the mid-1990s when George Lucas began writing the first of three long-awaited prequels to the original Star Wars trilogy. Early on in the process, artist Ian McCaig was okay. drafted in to produce concepts for a number of the film's characters. Okay. Jar Jar. Qui-Gon. Because episode one had a full three years of pre-production, an almost unheard of length of time for a feature film, McCaig, who would also design the character of Padme, spend huge amounts beautiful. of time trying to that design a character to compete with Ralph McQuarrie's original design for Darth Ooh, Vader. Ooh, that is clean! At first, when McCaig was asked to design the saga's newest yeah. Sith Lord, he yeah. tried to design a mask or helmet. Okay. Yeah, dude, I know this gotta be a tough job. had a nervous dude. breakdown during the process as, in his own words, Vader had a perfect design. Dude, that is clean! Finally, after Ain't three years, McCaig began to design Mother a villain Towns in the next the face. Okay. The it mother was around of Darth this Maul. time that plans were briefly considered to make Darth Maul a woman. In Lucas's script, the character of Darth Maul is described as a vision from your worst nightmare. Awesome Taking this job, advice, man. And that's Ian a good McKay way to produce concept art for the oh, character, showing that, a fierce that would have been Sith nice. Witch with strands of Bro, red that ribbons forming me. across her face. But George Lucas thought the look was too intense, telling McCaig to come up with his second worst nightmare instead. The so the first one was a more of a nightmare than Darth Maul. Darth, Darth Maul is a nightmare too. But. For one of these designs, he took David Dozeretz from yeah. Lucasfilm's animatics team and superimposed yeah, a circuit board on his face. <laughs> nah, nah, not Lucas that one. Lucas was intrigued by one. the idea, and McCaig began to produce other facial patterns for the character of Maul. Okay. McCaig's next concept used production designer Gavin Bokwe's face, but with the skin peeled away to reveal the reddish muscle structure Bro, you have to beneath. be really talented to think of something like that. McCaig added pieces no. of black that tape to the design, right. no. creating a raw such effect that looked as if he had dropped ink there. patterns onto the picture and folded it in that half. That is beautiful, man. Dang. George Lucas loved it, and the patterns quickly evolved into Darth Maul's iconic tattoos. Maul's Bro, head originally he never, had feathers based on I didn't know those were tattoos. Items. I mean, I knew the over time, but you know, that was Dugman. just kind of recently. Yeah, I called the myself a Darth Maul fan. Such as those commonly found in depictions of the Christian devil. The devil. Yep. George Lucas wanted the lightsaber battles in The Phantom Menace to be faster and more intense than those These guys in the are in their prime, man. As they would be depicting the Jedi in their prime. With this in mind, Darth Maul's clothing developed from a tight bodysuit with a muscle pattern to a Sith robe Yo, based on samurai the Sith cleats, robe loose amazing. enough to allow I, I like the that to jump, than the, uh... spin, run, and roll. Wow. With Darth Maul's design finalized, stunt coordinator Nick Gillard was recruited to create a new lightsaber fighting style for the prequel trilogy. Gillard came up with a style that merged a number of sword fighting disciplines such as kendo and kenjutsu with swinging techniques such as tree chopping. Thanks to Gillard's Dang. ideas, Darth Maul's iconic double-bladed lightsaber was born. My boy. Nevertheless, Maul wasn't actually the first Star Wars character to wield one. The expanded universe character of Exar Kun, who okay. first appeared as an antagonist right. in 1994's Jedi Academy trilogy, is notable as the first character ever depicted to wield a double-bladed lightsaber, several thousand I years like before Zebrak's successor. To demonstrate this new fighting style he had come up with for Darth Maul, Nick Gillard filmed a test tape with martial artist and stuntman Ray Park. My boy, man. Lucas that and his guy producer is... Rick McCallum 
was so impressed with the test tape that they offered Park the role of Maul in the film. Just prior to Park's casting, Star Wars The Last Jedi actor Benicio mm. Del Toro was set to play the character. I don't see that but working the as a Rican Dorf Maul, pulled man. out of the project when George Ray, Lucas Ray Park removed is most Dorf of Maul's lines. No one else can do this. Ray when Park he is sat Dorf. down to put on Darth Maul's makeup for the first time, actor Ray Park forgot he was wearing a small silver I earring. I never in his left noticed ear, the earring. Only later. Bro, but George it's a Lucas clean, it's a clean look. I never noticed the earring. Can be seen in all of Darth Maul's scenes. Never noticed where he that, isn't dude. Wearing never a hood. noticed it. Park also had a hand in developing Maul's fighting style, asking that the hilt of his double-bladed lightsaber be made longer so that he could use it more efficiently. Despite his fearsome look, George Lucas considered Ray Park's boy, voice man. too that high pitch for a boy, villain dude. with the devilish gravitas of Darth Maul. British actor and comedian Peter Serafinowicz Listen, was Maul quickly only drafted into voice of lines for just three brief lines in, in the, the film. film. Sarah Finowich later joked about how disappointing the experience of working with Lucas to create the character had been. I said, uh, what, how do you want me to do this? What, what direction can you give me? And he said, just make him evil. Make him sorry, not evil. Uh, all right, okay. Yeah. I had to revoice this Ray Park guy because his voice was, I don't know, it was just like too soft, you know. And I remember George Lucas saying to me, Yo, you know, and like, like I, dude, it's always like, like that. James Earl Jones. Like, and I was like, <laughs> dude, this guy is a fierce, no. like a bad ape, man. But after the release it's always of the people like that. in 1999, like, uh, Darth fighter, like the ultimate fighter, but he's probably one of the most nicest people the in the world. Not like one of the nicest people you'll probably ever meet in the world, man. The character's brief appearance of less than 10 minutes left fans yearning for more, but Got luckily to, for them, his Star Wars story wasn't over. In 2011, Maul returned in Season 4 of the Clone Wars animated series. Bro, was because I happy, man. he had been cut in half in The Phantom Menace, the former Sith apprentice required a new I'll be honest with you, back then I was the glad. Show. He killed Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon was my favorite guy. Darth Maul had previously been created but by now Darth Maul is. concept artist Aaron McBride, for the Infinity's graphic novel, Star Wars Visionaries. For the character's return in the Clone Wars, voice actor Sam Witwer Sam was a popular character oh. and therefore felt a responsibility to get it right and respect the character's iconic status. Maul. Witwer described Maul as Bro. broken and attempted to convey he his shattered mind too. through his You got Ray Porter, then you got Sam Witwer. The Amazing character's design on the show is very similar to his look in The Phantom Menace, and the animators used the designing of the character as an opportunity to improve animation on the series. Because the character's appearance awesome required initial job, emotions bro. such as anger and hatred using only facial expressions, the animators spent time improving the modeling process so they were able to achieve better oh, expressions. Maul's time in the Clone Wars came to an end with defeat at the hands of his former master Darth Sidious. Right. To many people's dismay, he held his own against uh, Sidious. With Sidious deciding to spare Maul's life, of course, uh, the Sidious got plot on Maul around to return too, yet Of course, again he wouldn't be later Sidious. Of course. Since the executive producer of Star Wars Rebels, Dave Filoni, had decided to bring Darth Maul back in the Clone Wars, he felt a responsibility to bring the former Sith apprentice's story to a meaningful conclusion. Yeah, so dude, for I hated and the that, man. Team behind dude, Rebels I hated with several that. members of the Lucasfilm story group to make sure there weren't any future plans for the character in other Star Wars media. Thankfully, a much older Maul resurfaced in Star Wars Rebels in 2016, but with a sound we were returning to voice the character. Meeting up with Kenobi again, man. Maul's death came very quickly in a short duel with Obi Wan Kenobi. A decision which that wasn't was made lightly. That was a beautiful, lightly. beautiful fight. Beautiful. Filoni took beautiful. inspiration for Obi Wan's final duel with Maul from Kaizo, the master swordsman in Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai, who engages in a duel he doesn't want to fight because he knows it will be over quickly. Dang. In the duel, Maul tries to defeat Obi Wan with the a very same similar move to the one he killed Qui Gon Jinn with. Maul tries the same move again, but Kenobi is ready and slices his lightsaber in half. As he dies in the arms of Obi-Wan, Maul learns that the Jedi Master is protecting the Chosen One. Realizing that there is still hope to destroy Emperor Palpatine, who has wrecked his life, Maul's objectives finally align with his lifelong nemesis. Farewell, dude.
you were amazing man. Yo, what can i say i love learning new things especially about my favorite character you know i don't know everything and i'm quite sure there's some guys out there that know everything i've been practicing my Darth Maul voice I'm trying to think of a line um i know i can say all the battlefront lines um you i claim a jedi young but powerful the time is upon us the jedi will be no more skywalker is it grand master yoda test me fight me solve me <laughs> i'm trying dude but hey i'm not gonna hold you guys man i hope you enjoyed this video i'm your boy rockzilla you know you guys get in the comments give me some more info on them all man i want to know everything that's my that's my guy dude i hope you guys have an awesome day may the force be with you always